Oh, that's fun. Here we got a. Uh, You've got the opportunity to go to pretty much any lane in this game. Top is definitely your best bet. Um, easiest setup. Easiest uh, pre-6. Mid is necessitated on him to get a skill shot. He doesn't have Ignite either, so it's kind of hard to kill him through his ult. Just kiting the red buff around. Okay. It's fine. Normally if you aren't going to look for an invade, Raptor start with W is better. But if you are going to look for an invade, that's fine. Going in the smalls first. Okay, kite it upwards. Good. Okay. They're normal. Speed through this. Pull it all the way up. Good. Okay, kiting it with the hunter's talisman. Good. Assume you're gonna smite this. Now you're going into his jungle, where Nectin's already going. Okay. <laughs> no. He kind of fucked up my uh, invade. Yeah. Nah. Would have happened regardless. She had it warded. Okay, so now you're looking for middle here. Okay. Okay. Alright. So, this, even before um, anything happens in this gank, is. Just a really sketchy yank because um, if you look at his CS, Devlin CS, he's got six, which means he's done um, blue or Gromp. You know it's blue because you saw him with blue buff earlier. You know he's done rafters and you know he's done red because that adds up to eight. And the thing is, if he's got eight CS and you go for and you just saw him with Renekton, like Renekton just saw the Evelyn for you, and you go for this mid gank, it's the freest counter gank in the world because even if he's the, the normal play for him is to, to look towards Wolves and towards Gromp. Mm -hmm. But even if he's starting to look towards Wolves and Gromp, if you go for this mid gank, it's very easy for him to even come from here and just say, oh, this guy's ganking middle, I'm going to counter gank. So basically, once you see the Evelyn there, you can't go for this gank. It's, a, it's pretty much a 100% counter gank rate, unless you A, insta-kill Echo, which isn't going to happen because he's got Flash and he's Echo, or... Um, two, the Evelyn is just an idiot, which you should never be banking on. Okay, I, I got a couple questions about that. Um, okay. So first of all, the last time that we, I think I saw Evelyn, she was like walking upwards to, to watch the wolves, right? Because like, um, Renekton was chasing her. Alright, yeah, well, let's take a look at your vision. Your blue side, so, okay, Renekton's gonna walk in. I see <clears throat> Evelyn here. Yeah, she walks down. And then she walks back up a little bit. Yeah. And that's so you just smited red, so and she doesn't know I'm going to gank mid, I was thinking. So I thought like I knew that she was like somewhere around there, but I thought she would never first of all she would never react soon enough. And then secondly, I also don't really understand like why are we losing? Because if you see like we're taking Echo down like almost all the way without taking like much damage. So I was thinking, like, even if she counter ganks, like, we will just turn on her and kill her, but... You can't turn on her. No, you, like... use, you use all your cooldowns on Echo. How are you gonna turn? So, so this, this is, like, okay, so Ari charms, you ch chunk Echo, and then he flashes. This is where you stop. This is, like, if you wanna just go for this, it's fine, because you get to flash. The, the problem comes when you jump, because as soon as you jump, you're committed. You have no way of getting out anymore. So if he is here, you're dead. Like, that's completely fine. Like, you can just take the flash and get out, you know, because it's a fast gank. The thing is, as soon as you commit to jumping in and following his flash, it's gonna, it takes so much longer to finish off the kill, because you still have to auto him, Q him, and probably auto him again. And then, on top of that, if anyone does show up, you know, Riven could have TP'd, you know, it doesn't have to be just the Evelyn. You're just dead. Yeah. Yeah, I really didn't anticipate, like, that much damage. I thought I would be fine, but, uh, even if she counter again. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm pretty sure she flashes on you, but I don't even... But how, how deep you go, she probably doesn't need a flash on you. No, she doesn't even need a flash, she could've just ran you down too. The thing is, like, when you when you go for a gank, part of it... Um, part of it is also how quickly you can get the kill. Like, if you can't get the kill quickly and you don't know where the enemy jungler is, then it's usually really, really sketch. Like, 
If you're gonna, like, so let's do, let's do a normal path, okay? Let's say you do red, you do wolves, and you do blue, okay? So the same path you did this game, pretty normal path, right? Most people do that. Mm -hmm. Evelyn did, uh, a, not the exact same thing, he did wolves, he did, uh, rafters, and then, uh, he did, he did blue rafters and then red, which is, um, just slightly better for Evelyn, because, uh, she does rafters really well. Um, and let's say Riven was pushing in her next in, okay? And you say, oh, Riven's pushed, I'm gonna walk up and kill her. But the thing is, um... She's she's really mobile, right? So if you, if Renekton doesn't get the stun instantly or whatever, then you have to walk, you have to cut kill her by running her down all the way through the lane, right? And if you're running someone all the way down through a lane, or you're not insta killing someone in a gank, and someone's anywhere near the area, like Evelyn could have literally just done, uh, went to Krugs after the red buff, and then she sees you start the gank top from right here, you start running all the way down, and then she's like, oh, well, this is a free ass counter gank. She's not even ready immediately, but she doesn't need to be ready immediately because you're taking. 10-15 seconds to execute the gank, and then it's an easy counter gank. It's the same concept here, although it's not exactly... Um, you don't take 15 seconds, but the gank takes a while. So let's look at where Evelyn is, okay? He's right here. Yep. He's go he's looking for River Scuttle. That's why he ends up seeing you on this counter gank. So, the thing about this gank is that it was actually pretty easy to have a, a decent idea about where Evelyn is because all you need to do is walk up and drop a ward on just wait like, ten, like take 10 seconds out and walk up and drop a ward on his Krugs because if he's not on his Krugs then and he and you didn't run into him on the way then you know he's on his bot side jungle by then and then if he's on the wolves this gank doesn't actually take that long so like the time for him to walk from wolves probably wouldn't be enough unless you're going for the dive but when you see him in that area like you saw him with Renekton saw him for you. Like it's really greedy to go for a gank like this unless you get your vision of him again. Okay. Cool. It's the same concept if you're gonna go for like that top gank like I talked about earlier, with like you just do three camps and you go top. Against like well it doesn't work against Evelyn just because Evelyn has uh stealth. But most of the time if you wanna go for like a top gank like that, just ward this bush when you walk up the river. You ward the tri bush before you go for the gank. So, like, if you see, if you start uh, running some someone down the lane for that gank, and you see someone come from the tri bush, then you know you can back off. Yeah. It's the same concept against Evelyn. It's just you have to work a little harder to get the vision because she she has stealth. Mm -hmm. yep. So, um, long sword or machete are both fine here. Just make sure you buy a control word with it. That's your buy. Okay, machete and control. Good. So. Your best bet is to go your bot side here. Okay. So, Evelyn showing middle here actually gives you um, some really good info. When he shows up to Yinkari, he's 9 CS. And he comes from the top side. So, you know exactly he did one of two things. He either did your Gromp or he did your Scuttle. And then he went middle to Yink again. Which means his whole bot side's up because he didn't clear any of his bot side on the first clear. Mm -hmm. yep. So you know he's heading to his bot side right now. So it doesn't really apply here, but just a, a general rule. Um, your first spawn of Krugs is a complete waste of time outside of just resetting the camp, just because the EXP it gives is terrible after the nerfs. So unless you don't have anything else to do, uh, in most cases, you just want to kill the big one and the small one that spawns initially. The big one and the medium one that small that spawns uh, initially, and then kill the smalls from the medium one, and don't kill the mediums from the big one at all. Oh, okay. Because it's just a it's a pretty big waste of time how much EXP it gives you. Yeah. Okay. In this case, you're going to be farming out anyway, so it doesn't matter as much. But um, usually you just leave those. The second spawn is great. Second spawn is great, but the first spawn is terrible. Okay. Yeah, so you're just clearing through here. You're a bit behind from dying early and losing double buffs after clearing only three camps to even get a scuttle, so it's fine to look for a bit uh, a full clear here. So you won't really be healthy enough to walk into the river safely after this. You don't have top priority either. Let me go for a dive here. Let's see. So, how does this happen? Ribbon walks up. Okay. 
So as soon as you see this situation coming, just back. You should be backping your Renekton because you don't want to fight at this HP and mana, right? You just want to get out. You got enough for EQ, and maybe if you stay in the jungle and regen a bit more, you'll get EQW. But you don't really want to fight at this HP. So as soon as like you see this situation happening, just start backpinging a lot because you don't want to get into a fight. Okay. So, good that you don't greed and try to finish off the Grom player. It would have been another yep. death for sure. sure. Right. So, walking up towards your top side. So, this is a this is a bad situation to be in just because um, whenever you whenever you uh, whenever you walk into the jungle, you want to walk into a quadrant of the jungle where you have at least more than one camp to clear. Um, not applicable here just because the way things shook out, you, you were full clearing and then got stopped on your final camp, so the only thing you really can go to is Bromp. Um, but just in general, um, if you only have one camp up on one side of your jungle, don't go to that. Just because it's a big waste of time. Okay. okay. Good. Just walk away from him there, spit at the Gromp. Okay, and now you're heading back down towards your bot side, and this is good for you because your red buff's gonna come up, your Krug's already up, and your raptors are going to come up. So you can anticipate he's going to be on the bot side with you because he should be getting his blue buff. He's got 22 CS now, which means he's... Um, well, you actually can't predict um, what he's done because you haven't seen him enough. Uh, okay. Cancelled your auto-attack there, but that's fine. Okay. So... You can actually... Um, you can actually just pull the red buff into this bush and just kill it there and it won't reset and you're Wait, hold on. It, it's super laggy so it, uh, what bush did you mean? Uh, this bush, the one you're in right now. You can pull it right okay. to the edge of this bush and just kill it in there if you're afraid of okay. someone invading on you because uh, they won't see the red buff like you, if even for Evelyn she won't see you until she walks into the bush and then you can just jump out onto that blast plant if it gets really scary Yeah, I decided to go for this because I felt it was safer. Because I, I sometimes a lot in these games, like you will see people that like walk up and then pretend they're gone, but they're still around, you know. Yeah. So of course. then I still get ganked like at the red. So I figured this was safer. The problem with this is that it's inefficient um, because you're probably gonna have to reset after this because you don't have the HP to clear a red buff. Mm -hmm. <coughs> no. Okay, so. So let's say I, I did um, red buff in that other bush instead. What would be like the plan after that? Just recall and start bottoming. Or um, I'm, I towards my plan? You can you can do Krugs after it. You'll have enough HP from red buff regen. Okay. You have enough HP from red buff regen, and Krugs do more damage to you than the red buff, so you'd be a little healthier too, even before the regen. Okay. So now this is just a really scary situation because you're stuck holding the lane. Okay. Um. As far as this goes, is uh, at this point you really just shouldn't even be holding the turret <laughs> because yeah. um, you I don't have no idea that echo is coming. So. Yeah, but um, you know he's he's been gone for let's let's look at the map right. So yeah. let's look at how long he's been gone. He disappears from your vision at 7:51, and I'm pretty sure you don't see him again. And he goes downwards too, so yeah. So he, he disappears for a good 20 seconds, and you see him going downwards a lot the last time you spot him. And the thing is, uh, even without Echo there, there's a pretty reasonable chance that they can dive you with just Evelyn, Galio, MF. So holding that turret is just really scary. If your Caitlyn was closer, like in range, to actually maybe like flash heal you or something, or something happened, that's fine. I think it was fine to just like sit around like right here and wait for your AD carry to come up because they can't dive both of you with the resources they had. Um, but going there alone is pretty much suicide. It's even a little okay to just like sit here and catch the EXP, um, sit on, around this line and just like catch the EXP. If Echo shows up from this bush, then you can just jump away. But um, the way the position you put yourself in, you were just you were just dead. There was no real way of getting out of that. So now you're really really behind. 
So you're still you're still gonna be needing to farm out a bit here. Thankfully, you didn't lose your red buff for that, so not in the worst position possible, but you're definitely quite behind. Evolving Q, okay. Okay, pulling the rafters down. W. Good counter gank by the Evelyn once again. Just catch the farm of the turret while your mid laner recalls. Nothing really much you can do here. Oh, teleport Ari. I forgot. Jesus. Okay. Just leave him to farm. Okay. So, um, small thing. Whenever you're exiting a lane after you hold, don't ever walk uh, in a direction uh, out of the vision. So basically, you you start leaving here, right? But you start cutting to the left, so it's very obvious what you're gonna do. Um, in some cases, it's obvious anyway, because here you just got red buff, so you probably cleared out all your bot side anyway, so he, he, can, he can guess that, but you make it too easy for him by walking to the left. Just walk straight down until you're out of vision, and then walk to wherever you want to go. Or you can even fake to the right, and then actually walk left. It, it wastes a little bit of time, but um, if, the, if the enemy jungler is paying attention, it's really easy to just uh, look at where you exit from, and then know what you're doing from that. Oh, interesting. It's something you can do, too, because it's it's pretty obvious, and a lot of the time, people won't be ready if, if they're, like, holding... they're holding a lane, and then, um, you, like... So, let's say, like, uh, Evelyn's... Evelyn was holding middle, okay? Um, if Evelyn was holding middle, and then you see her exit then you can just wait into this bush and then she'll if she's walking to the left then it's really easy you just face check she just face checks and you kill her same thing if she walks to the right you can just wait here and then when she goes towards the wolves you can just kill her So not not really much to say about this. Um, Renekton just gets bits it in, gets a stun, and then you just kill her. <laughs> really not much to say about this gank. Uh, nothing to really change mechanically. Okay, so the thing is, you should you should stay and push. Um, you should push this uh, turret with him because they have just committed to making a play bottom and. Um, you don't see Echo, but you're with Redacted, so if Echo shows up, you can just turn on him. Um, you have camps up here, but you need to... Uh, it's more important that you pressure the turret here, because they're making a play on the opposite side of the map. Okay. You can always so go get your just, camps after. We're just trying to get as much damage on the turret as possible, or yes. just push it through? Yes, get as much turret damage, uh, damage on the turret as possible, and then make sure you force the TP. She didn't actually have to TP here, this is a bad TP from her. If you had shoved it into the turret faster, she would have uh, missed more minions and also 100% um, had to TP. She didn't really have to there, but she did anyway. Mm -hmm. oh. So, looking for a repeat top, it seems. Um, good play, would have been a lot better if you'd pushed earlier because you'd have more damage on the turret. Okay, that's... Oh wow, okay. That should have been free. Might not be free now. What the hell? Uh oh. You're committed though. You're dead. Okay, that's fine. Now, when you're behind like that, uh, you kind of have to go for plays like that, but uh, yeah, it's kind of rough. Cut. So, let's check your golds. 1483, Warrior, you have 500 left over. Probably a long sword. Yeah, probably a long sword after that. And another control. Let's put your buy. There's the warrior. Ruby crystal. So you're going cleaver a second. Uh yeah, I usually do that when I'm behind. You're behind. Okay. Um There's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but 
even if you're behind against a team comp like that, where no one on that team really wants to build armor except for maybe Galio, but he's a support. Um, getting early Yomus is just really helpful versus that, especially because um, the extra movement speed will help you get out of like a lot of what these champions do, like Riven, bunch of short dashes, Evelyn, slow and speed up. Um, Echo is a bit harder to get out of with just movement speed, but it does help you walk out of his W, and obviously he walks out of MF Ultimate with Yomus too. So, you get a lot of utility usage out of the Yomus active here, and at the same time, uh, like I said earlier, this guy is going to build a Tabi, and that's about it. This guy will build, I guess, Iceborne and maybe Zanyas, and this guy will build Zanyas, but he's not going to rush it. He's going to go... Uh, Protobelt into Lich Bane almost guaranteed, so he won't have item. He won't have armor until at least third item, and this guy will probably build tank, but it's irrelevant. And this person won't build anything more than Tabi. So, having a Yomus in the early game will help a lot. Cause the thing is, you can get Cleaver first, and usually it's fine. But the thing is, um, against a team without any real tank, the Cleaver isn't as useful as the Yomus early, and the thing about uh, building Kazix is that after the Cleaver. Um, you you want like a GA, you'll get like a Death Dance, and maybe like a Tiamat potentially, but at the end of the day, like, Yomus is still going to be one of the best uh, items to get for you anyway, and if you're going to get you might as well just get it early. Okay, interesting. Cleaver isn't a bad item, but it's, it's actually, it's a really good item, but it's just usually better to get it second. When people like actually are starting to get like armor items. Against like tanks and stuff, it's uh, like tank jungler or tank top, it's more acceptable to get it first. But um, just in general, you don't really want to get it first. Do you normally go cleaver first even when you're ahead or do you do you go you only in that case? Um, I almost always go go it first because my reasoning is that like uh, if I'm ahead I know it's shitty reasoning, but if I'm ahead, I don't want to, <laughs> like, fall behind by doing a shitty dive or something, or, I don't know. I, it just feels safer to me, but... Okay. It's the same way that um, I used to when I started playing Kha'Zix. When I was doing good, I would always evolve uh, E second to just, like, clean up all the stuff um, in team fights. But then I started... I've actually been losing a lot of games lately, so um, maybe that has something to do with it. But I've started evolving W second, even if I'm ahead, because my thought process is that if I'm in a po at a point where the team fights, I can like completely clean them up and get like triple kills and other stuff. Um, if I'm in that position, then I'm probably already winning the game uh, without evolved E. So I, I like uh, evolving W second to just have like a little bit more security um, because I feel like the AOE slow is like really helpful. Uh, to save like teammates and stuff. Uh, I'd say it's definitely case by case. I think uh, a lot of people max uh, evolve W second when they shouldn't, and some people. Uh, it's a minority now, but there's there are definitely some people who evolve E second when they shouldn't. Um, it really does depends on. Um, it really depends on what your team needs out of you in a fight. So if your whole team is behind to the point where you're really the only threat in the fight, then you evolve E second because if you um, it lets you go in and at least clean up kills in a losing fight because you can just jump out after. Um, if it's a close game or like someone else on your team is useful or you're behind, then yeah, W second is better for the utility. But um, sometimes you're going to be in games where no one on your team is useful and you have to play for yourself and in that case then you should evolve E second. Okay. Yeah. So this whole, this is all kind of weird, pretty sure like Renekton just doesn't want to go bottom for some reason so you're stuck holding bot against the ribbon. Uh, yeah, you didn't need ult there, but I'm sure you'll yeah, understand I, that after. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, nothing really much to say about this, he kind of just forces you away. You're stuck holding bottom because Renekton has no idea what he's doing, so. You just get chunked out, you have to go back here, and you pick up a Kindle gem. Um, so don't ever do this. Um, if you're going for a cleaver, just pick up double ruby crystal if you have the slots instead of upgrading Kindle Gem. It's way more useful than Kindle Gem. Okay. Yeah. 
That's once you have double ruby crystals, if you don't have enough for phage, then yeah, just get the Kindle gem. But you have to double ruby crystals first, at least. Okay. So, clearing out crugs here. Yep. You should uh, start looking into using your E um, to AoE camps, um, just to clear them a little faster if you're 100% safe. I'm not saying you're 100% safe in this scenario, but you're, you're, you're one, if someone's like clearing bottom with you when you're doing crugs, you're usually pretty safe. It speeds it up a little bit because your E will kill all the, the small crugs. The big rafter, so clearing all the smalls out. Okay. Okay. Just catching people in your jungle. Can't overcommit to anything. Yep. Good that you don't overcommit with Galia Wolt up. Hold on to your E this whole time. Uh, your nectin's insane. Cut. Oh. Cut. Okay. So, pretty... Pretty good fight, all things considered, when you guys are behind. So, it's really nice that you hold on to your E and you don't overcommit for anything. You don't get greedy until you realize Galliolt is down, and then... Renekton's about to go in for you here, and that allows you to finally get into the fight. So yeah, good decision making to not go in beforehand. Um, one of the most important things as Kha'Zix is that you're never the first one into a fight unless you're jumping in to clean up someone in the back line and then jumping out with E-Reset. So really good awareness here to not just jump in and get yourself killed. Uh, you wait for Renekton to actually start the fight and then you go in and clean up which is your job so good okay. you can't kill that ward what are you doing okay so uh, I would drop your control ward since you didn't want to drop it here usually just, uh, just drop it here so you know you're not seen crossing at least There's not much else to what happens here. So you're clearing wards in the river while your team's sieging middle. Okay, yeah, this guy just this guy just gets himself killed. Not much to say about that. Go over and clean up the Evelyn and then walk away. Okay. So yeah. you've been you've been buying a lot of control wards, but you haven't really been using them very well. You kind of just been holding on to them. Um, if you're behind, just drop defensive controls either in this bush, at your blue buff bush, or right here. Um, you're holding on to them for quite a while here. Um, when you're behind, just drop them when you get the chance and just keep buying them. Because um, getting the defensive vision out and as often, getting defensive vision out early and often when you're behind like this is really important. Because your best chance of getting back in is like plays like what happened here, where they walk into your jungle and you get vision of them and then your whole team collapses on them. In games where you're like ahead, then you could just go, you could just like go sit in a bush bottom and kill their AD carry over and over. But that's not the case this game, so you have to find picks otherwise. Oh. Oh, there's really not too much to say right now. You're kind of just being pulled to lane, uh, lane to lane by um, what the enemy team's doing. Okay. And as soon as you get mid shoved out a little bit here, you want to be dropping your control in this bush. Okay. So the thing about this play is that. Um, one, you don't uh, control with this bush, so you don't know uh, if you're seen looking for it at all. And this is a big deal because if the enemy team is paying attention um, and you you cross this ward and you go for this play, 
it's very easy for them to like preemptively react, like because they get a few seconds notice before you actually go on an MF, and then get ready to counter gank you either with Galliwolt or with Evelyn, or both. Um, thankfully, the Evelyn's a little slow, and he walks away after they see you here. Um, you don't stealth immediately, so uh, you don't stealth immediately as soon as you hit this vision range of this ward. So they do see you. The Evelyn's just a little slow. He doesn't respond uh, quickly enough to counter gank immediately. Um, as soon as um, because like theoretically he should have been on you like way earlier, and then if Galio was paying attention, um, he could have vaulted too, and this play goes really really poorly. Um, it's fine to jump in and go for this to look for summoners, but um, as soon as uh, he ease you here and you can't get onto him immediately without using your ultimate, you want to get out because if you do get counter ganked, as long as you still have an ult charge, you can walk out and you'll be fine. But as soon as you commit your ult charge too, if the Galio ult and like the Evelyn had been closer, or even if like Echo had TP and he did something to TP too in the middle of the lane, then you're just like dead. No. So so what what if I um what if I drop that um control ward and I see it's warded? Do I just forget yeah, about the whole game? You don't go for the play, yeah. No. Okay. Interesting. Because um the thing about Galio ult is that. Um, when you're behind like this, it's already really hard for you to kill anyone, and Galliwalt makes that like pretty much impossible. Yeah, Do you think uh, that I should have done anything more to help? Um, no, 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 <laughs> no. Ignore his face. He stayed, yeah, he stayed uh, alive a lot longer than I expected. No, there's nothing. Like, you, I don't. Mm, I didn't think I could go in. Nothing you could have done there. No. Once you get the like, you were lucky to get the MF. <laughs> anything other than that was. Just, not gonna happen. Yeah. Cut. Once again, you're kinda just... <laughs> you can't really do anything after how terrible the early game went and how far behind you guys are already. You're kinda just being forced to react to what they do. Cut. Cut. Once again, holding on to jump. And now Renekton's committed, so... You can follow up now, get the W slow, he's gonna ult back, or just get stunned, okay. Okay. So, right here, um, just a small thing to change, like, all this is fine. Um, play closer to the TP when it comes in here. Because if Renekton wants to, Renekton, you, you know what he wants, right? He wants to try to fight on the TP, and if he's committed to wanting to fight on the TP, just make sure you're close to him. Um, not like next to him so you don't get stunned by like Riven as soon as she lands, but like close enough that you're ready to follow up immediately when if she does finish the TP. Oh. Okay, so now getting close to Cleaver money. Oh actually not even that close. This is a sad game. <laughs> Have to finish off Krugs here. Um would have done one more wave here, bottom. Um, before going to the Krugs, uh, as soon as Renekton commits to recalling here, because um, you're pretty, there's pretty low threat on you. Um, MF is middle, Galio is not ready, uh, not looking to fight. You guys killed Echo already, and Riven canceled TP. So the only person who could potentially be on you is Evelyn. But um, if Evelyn comes, you can just W and walk away. Uh, and, and it's like free. It's farm that's no that no one's gonna get because um, it's gonna be shoving into the turret anyway. So if you don't get it, then no one gets it, and then you, your team just loses out on free minions. So and, and when you're behind, you don't ever want to lose out on any free resources that you can get. Yep. But I should be clearing the whole uh, crux camp right now, right? Yes, this definitely. Point. Yeah. yeah. Every single time past the first one, you usually you usually just clear it all because it, it it's the biggest, it's the most exp camp for sure. It takes the longest, but when you're behind like this, then you, you want to be clearing it as much as possible. Just because it's the best way to get back into the game from an EXP and gold standpoint. Okay. Yep. Same thing as before. Be very, very careful when you're... Um, when you start a fight by jumping and uh, Wing like that. Because uh, if there's people closer, or if Galio like top flashes you, and then Riven comes, you're just instantly dead. So, yeah. walking up to W is fine. Like I, walking up to W, if you hold on to your E, is like really good. It's actually one of the biggest ways you get pressure because if they try to engage on you, you just jump out. 
But jumping in and then debuting is a lot scarier because your only method of escape after that is flashing or R. And you never want to be using that for free just to get a W off. Oh. Okay, yeah. Sitting near the wall, so you can just jump out if someone comes. Good. And. I believe. Uh, I don't think that's Cleaver money, but I think you're close. The team just getting caught here. It seems like they play for a ribbon. Mid tower is gonna die here. Oh. So you're just stuck thinning out the mid wave here. You can't really make it to fight ribbon. Thankfully, they got it without you. Just clearing the mid wave here. And then we're next to the CP in bottom. Okay. So as soon as it gets cancelled, you should walk over to this fight. Good. Cut. This is really good for you guys. Get back into the game with some free kills here. Okay. Baron is a bit ambitious, but um, good free kills here. Someone's gotta stop the Evelyn. I don't know what your Caitlyn's doing. Okay. MF. <laughs> okay. Uh, Cancelling you guys. So at this point, um, it's too late for you to make it to bottom, so just keep shoving top. You should be doing two waves here at least. Okay, so there's no reason for you to not do another wave here. Um, the blue buff will be waiting for you after you do another wave, and um, they're not going. There's not going to be people top because you killed two. There was <coughs> MF was here, but you crossed towards the middle and then walked downwards. Evelyn was obviously bottom pushing with a herald. The only person is Riven, but you can just W her and then jump out if she tries to stop you. And once again, look what happened. Since the wave is shoving, you guys are just losing free minions. All of these they are just going to die for free and no one's going to get them. Yep. Okay, so you finish Cleaver here, you buy another Longsword. Could be for anything. Um, in this case, I don't think Death Dance would be bad. <laughs> I still don't think Yomus or Death Blade are terrible in this case. Um, it doesn't go into GA, so that's not it. I think GA would be okay, but I feel like it'll need more damage at this point. Okay. Okay, not really much you can do in that fight. No way to really get in. Um, there was no follow-up or next in damage for the Rakan engage, so... What you could do there is pretty limited. Um, what you should be doing here is going back and healing, because um, you have a down you have downtime before the next wave. Because their wave just came in here while they were engaging. You guys clear it out here. And now you can recall. Because if a fight starts here, you're basically going to get one shot by the Echo's Lich Bane. You're used to set this health. Just go back and heal real quick. Um, because Especially because like Rakan is healing too. So like, even if it's just you two, like, you, can't, you can't defend it, right? Like, two on four, you have to wait until Rakan's back anyway. So you might as well just go heal yourself too. Especially because there's no wave. If there was a wave coming and you were going to be Wing the wave to try to clear it so they can't siege, that's different. But you're literally just Wing the air. <laughs> so, it's better to just go heal here. Yeah, and it takes Echo forcing you away for you to realize to go heal. So, yeah. Playing with your team here, sticking close to your carry, so if Evelyn jumps them, you can just respond. Cut. Oh boy, this is about to get very interesting. <laughs> okay, this fight's over. <laughs> Run. <laughs> 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 yeah, this fight's instantly over. Yeah, there's, there's nothing you can do there. <laughs> this fight literally is just instantly over. <laughs> there's no, literally nothing to change. Uh, as soon as Caitlyn gets bursted out there, it's over. Just go back. Cause um, it's really it's more important that you live at that case in that uh, um, in that situation because um, at the very least, if they go for Baron and you're alive, they have to respect the fact that you can make a spike play. Yep. So. Good as soon as you saw this initial situation to just uh, leave. Oh, walked into the taunt. Okay. Okay. 
Sticking on Galio here. Walk out of the Echo Stun. Okay, fucked up your jump, but that's fine. Mechanical mistake happens, that guy is dead. Leave him. Yep. Good W. Should be gone. Yeah. <laughs> this game is pretty tragic. You're kind of just, uh... A lot of what you can do is just, uh... Predicated on what they do. Because, um, when you're this behind and your whole team loses lane like this, you have to just play reactively. Yeah. Um, and just take what you can get. Yeah. <laughs> so, keep doubling, try to clear the wave. Yep. Okay, yeah, good to eat the taunt here to give a minion minion aggro on the turret. And you guys just kill him here. Follow up on the con, and yeah, good. Wow, this guy's eating every trap. Okay, back up here. Good W. And just let your team clean it up. No need to risk yourself. You gotta shut down on you at this point. Good. So your team fighting has been pretty clean overall. Like some of it has been pretty very. It has, some of the decisions you had to make are very simple because the fight's just over immediately. But uh. Yeah. There's a lot of people who are too aggressive into you, trying to make anything happen when they're behind like this, so... You guys somehow get a goddamn ace down 10k gold. Uh, I don't know. This is some game. Yeah, I don't know whether to be more impressed or just uh, disgusted that the enemy team walked in one by one and died. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Now make sure you never do what Renekton is doing and sit behind the Baron when you're clearing it, because then you get stunned by the spikes and you take more damage. Whenever you're clearing Baron, unless you have to be behind the pit to zone someone out from the back, always hit it from the front if you can. I see. And, um, if you're a champion who uh, does the Baron really fast, make sure you're not the one taking it. Because you do half damage to it if you're the one taking it. Okay. Yeah, so in this case, definitely let Renekton tank it. Um, unfortunately you guys don't get it, you get pushed off here. Um, you're forced to heal. So do you think the call was bad, or...? Do I think the call was bad? So, let me, let me see. I have to... Look at death timers and everything, and look how your team plays it. So, let's see, when you get to the Baron... Evelyn's about to spawn, two guys at TP are dead, the Galio and the MF are coming. And your whole team is kind of late to it. Uh, yeah, this is this is a bad call. <laughs> you should just get me well, Everyone here. was calling it, so. <laughs> well, yeah, it's normal. It's normal. Yeah, that people will call yeah. it like this. But the thing is, um, all MF has to do is walk over to right here, wait for Arya to throw charm, and then press R, and you're all dead. <laughs> yeah. Even without anyone else coming, and if she just presses R, either you guys are all dead trying to finish it, or you guys have to wait. And then by the time you get back onto the Baron after the MF ult ends, then Evelyn comes in and kills all of you. And then, if Evelyn doesn't kill all of you, then the TPs will. So, this is just a really sketchy call. You're never really going to get it um, in any world, unless they somehow don't think you're going to do Baron, and they don't come and contest you. It's better to just get mid turret here, because getting mid turret also opens up um, the opportunity to get picks in their jungle. Um, and it's the first turret. <laughs> this is the first turret you get, so the extra global gold would help you guys at this point. Anything would help. So, yeah. You guys kind of just get forced away. Um, you go spend your money here. Warhammer, pickaxe, so... Death Dance, I'm assuming? Uh, I was going for it, but I think I wrote... What did I buy? Sorry, it's really laggy. Pickaxe and Warhammer. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, okay. Death Dance. So, fortunate for you guys, they don't actually get the Baron while you guys are back healing. Yeah. Once again, what you can do is limited by what they do. They force you away, you get zoned off by an Echo W, so you can't walk through. Riven TP's bottom, so you're pretty safe to know that they're not going to do Baron. So that's actually great for you, because you guys have no real good way of getting vision in, and then M the Riven TP's bottom, so they're not going to do it. Yeah. Okay, don't. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So everything was going great until you committed to walking forward on the Galia. 
So the thing is, uh, all of this is fine. You know, once Rakan goes in, you jump in, and then you finish off Echo, and then you get Taunted knocked up. So this is where you get this last Q, and then you start backing up, because um, you don't know what the rest of their team is. If MF's over this wall and starts ulting, you're dead. If Evelyn's here and she is, you're dead. Um, just let Rakan and Ari go first, right? Because the way you your champion functions, especially in this team comp, is you never want to be the first one in. Because first one in against this team comp is dead, and you don't want to be dead. Um, first one in against this team comp is likely dead. Like, if it's Renekton or Ari going in and they land anything, um, like Galio Taunt or Echo W, they're instantly dead. Uh, Rakan has more leniency because he can just run through their whole team with Ultimate and W. But if you go in, same kind of thing as Ari. Second you get locked down by anything, you're dead, and at this HP, you're just you're just dead regardless. So yeah. If he had just walked away here, um, and let Rakan go in first, he would have eaten the brunt of the burst, and then you could have uh, thrown out Ws to help your team get out, and then maybe you buy enough time for the rest of your team to get here, and then you can clean up the rest of this fight. But because you go in first and you just die, they have no real way of cutting them out, and Rakan has to just go in and commit suicide, basically, to get Ari out. So yeah, especially when you have um, W Evolve, make sure you're playing a bit more passive than you would otherwise. You know, when you have E Evolve, you can afford to play more aggressively, but when you got W Evolve, especially in cases like that, you want to be making sure you're staying alive as long as possible, just throwing Ws for your team. Yep. So, don't really have money for anything here. The only thing you could do is sell control for Vap Scepter, and you do. Uh, I don't agree with this at all. Um, just because 15 AD is not going to make a big difference for you at this point in the game, and how often are you auto-attacking in fights for lifesteal anyway, right? Yep. Um, if you need to heal, just use your W in a fight. Um, or W on like jungle camps. Um, the control ward is so much more important to you at this point than the Vap Scepter. Just because... Um, Getting defensive vision, like I said earlier, in this blue buff bush, or right in this bush, or this bush right outside red buff, is so important because when they walk in um, and you get a pick, it's so much easier for you to fight. Like, you guys got a goddamn ace down, like 12k gold, because uh, they all walked in one by one and you killed them. The way you lose is you try to fight 5v5 right now. And if you have vision of solo people walking in and you see like it's not 5 and you take that fight, and you keep getting picks like you guys have been in the past like 10 minutes, that's how you get back into the game. So those control wards are way more important to you than a VAP sector at this point. Don't be selling them for a VAP at that point, at this point in the game. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. So your goal right now is to try to get as much uh, as much free gold safely as you can for Death Dance or for the next fight. Because uh, the way Death Dance works is that um, the item components are so much less useful than the completed item itself. Uh, you're probably dead here. Uh, yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, it's just greedy. Um, if you're going to be clearing waves like that, it's completely fine to clear the wave because you want to get your you're looking for your death dance gold. You're 100 off right now. You just want to get this wave before you go. Uh, hold on to your W. Just kill it with Qs and autos because the second you W, it's it's free for him to just kill you because. You jump out, but you don't have any way to slow him, and he's got Yomus and you don't, so he just runs you down. And yeah, that's about it. Yeah. He, he gets a bit lucky with hitting you on the edge of like his... Uh, he hits you in the stealth both times, uh, with CC. But um... Realistically, like, if you had W there and you don't use it on creeps, you're fine. And yeah. Galio goes for a really greedy ultimate to try to save her at tier... At uh, inhibitor turret when their whole team's like doing dragon, so. so it ends up going okay. But yeah, just it's fine to do waves like that. Just make sure you don't waste your W. As long as you have W and E, it's pretty hard for anyone to chase you down, uh, yeah. even without your ultimate. And if you do have ultimate, then like it, it's it's pretty much impossible for anyone to get to you unless they one shot you. Okay, so you buy death dance here, speed up till you're alive. Okay, so you're doing. <laughs> It's really funny the the way this this game has gone. You you had an awful early game and then you were playing well, playing well, and then you had two random deaths and <laughs> yeah yeah. So very interesting game so far. Okay, this one isn't as dangerous because Galio was dead, so you're pretty free to go for this. Um, you had your team with you. Oh wow, sniped him too. 
So yeah, worst case, worst, worst, worst scenario is like uh, Evelyn's there, but you have your team with you too. So um, the risk reward for going for that is completely fine. If Evelyn's there, then you either turn on Evelyn with your team or you just back up. But yeah, that's a pretty low risk play because Galio wasn't going to be in range to ult. So going for that without Galio ults is fine. It's just that when Galio is there, you have to respect the ultimate. And you guys get your second turret of the game now, 32 minutes in. And you guys get another pick, so yeah. I have no idea what your Caitlyn's doing, but uh... Playing with your team here and just getting picks, so that's good. Oh. Just keep pushing. Uh, your Caitlyn's trolling. So is their ribbon, but... <laughs> There's uh, <laughs> three picks already, so you can just keep pushing here. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so in a normal siege where you have an AD carry that isn't in the base, um, and there's more than like one or two people alive, you don't ever want to walk up to hit the turret because um, it's very, that's the easiest way for them to engage on you or chunk you out to a point where you can't fight. Thankfully, um, Echo and Riven are a little late here when Evelyn goes in, so you only eat a little bit of damage. But generally, if your AD carry is where he should be, right here, and hitting the turret, um, and not here, then you don't need to hit the turret. Just let him hit it so you don't risk uh, getting engaged on. Or getting chunked out to the point where you have to back. Cause, yeah, it, it's very easy for you to just get chunked out to a point where you can't fight. <laughs> if you walk up and try to get like 100, 200 damage on the turret. Just let your ranged champions hit it, usually. Yep. Okay. Okay, so when you're low like this and you don't want to recall, just try to be healing off the jungle camps, like in between downtime. Um, you can be dubbing the wave as it comes in if they're looking to siege, but if they're if that's if they're not looking to siege and you're look, looking to stick around, just make sure you're healing off jungle camps. It's really fast right now, especially with death dance. Okay, so you pick up BF sword. I'm assuming that's for GA, which is fine. Um, if it's dust blade, you're insane. If it's Bloodthirster, you're, you're just dumb, but uh, I'm assuming it's for GA, so it's fine. So right now, your goal is to try to get 16 and or GA money um, before the next fight at Baron, because you're 16 and the E-Evolve lets you go... Uh, lets you play fights so much more leniently than you would otherwise. Okay. Yep. Uh, oh, you evolve in the middle of this fight. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh no. Just shows how my map awareness is, because I, I felt like it was safe at that point, and I was like, I need these resets, you know, to win this fight, but I didn't see Riven at all, and then obviously I'm just I mean, dead. You, didn't, you didn't have Riven or Riven, I'm pretty sure, but still, just don't do it in the middle of a fight. Just walk <laughs> up with your team first. Yeah. At least put yourself in a position where if they do try to jump you while you're evolving, like, that your team could trade. Because right here, like, Real, like, there's nothing really your team can do to trade this kill, right? Like, literally, Riven just kills you, and there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing your team is there to do about it, and then... Jesus. Well, in my mind, I'm, like, staying behind them, because if Riven is not there, then it should be, like, a safe position, right? Uh... The thing is, your, the team wants to, your team wants to go forward in this fight. And... If you, if you're back here, and they're going forward, like if, even if it if it doesn't get turned on, like from from your from your team's information, this is gonna be a good fight. Like it's not gonna get turned on. That's why they go forward, which is the, and yeah. you just wanna you wanna be up there with them first and foremost, even before before any of that, because you wanna be ready to finish off whoever they go on. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, that, that's about it for, for this fight. Really, I'm surprised they don't end the game here. <laughs> what happens? How did they not end here? What the hell? No. Chasing people around. No. Uh, they, should, they should still end. What the hell? Wait, how did MF die? Oh, MF gets executed by the turret? That's hilarious. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh my god, he actually died. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's literally the reason they don't end here. Wow, oh, you guys won the lottery. Holy shit. <laughs> okay.
Wow, this guy's literally trolling too. Holy. Alright. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> All right. <laughs> everyone in this game is trolling. Okay. So, thankfully, you only lose double in him, you don't lose Baird. Um, now you guys get farmed for a bit. Can get your level 16s before the next fight, you get your GA. So you're at your 4 item spike. Which is going to be really nice for you in the next fight. You have E Evolve. You'll actually have E Evolve, and you'll have GA next <laughs> fight. So you'll be able to yeah. play the fight very aggressively if you want to. And your team hopefully will hit level 16s before the next fight. Uh, this guy's close. This guy's close. So, not the end of the world because they didn't get Baron. Uh, but yeah, you guys should know at this point if they do get Baron, it's pretty much game over. So, make sure you're putting a lot of priority around getting vision in that area. So you should just recall by your GA here. Fight starts, so you walk over. Straight for MF, good. Jump reset. And get the hell out. <laughs> Keep Wing. Look for a chance to re-engage if your team goes. Uh, yeah, just keep Wing. <laughs> Still don't have a chance. And they're all dead. Okay, yeah, just keep Wing. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Okay. Team fighting against Kha'Zix is very, very simple, honestly. <laughs> you don't go in first, you W if you can't go in, and when you can go in, you jump in. And, oh. Okay. So. Go back and heal you here. Got your GA. So last item here, so now you're picking up Dirk, I'm assuming this is for Dustblade, it could be for Yomus too, but this is kind of what I was talking about, um, the thing is like, when you get to this point in the build, like, yeah, you could build like, Sterex or something, and it's like a, it's another like, tanky damage item, but like, at this point, like, you usually want at least one lethality item in your build anyway, and it's, you might as well just get it first to help yourself snowball in this case, in that case, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now you guys are just on uh, slave labor duty, clearing all the minions out. Hmm. Not really anything else you could do here. Uh, this dragon, you have to just concede it. There's not a chance you can grab it. Evelyn oh. <laughs> is a rage blade. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. This is just, uh, this is one of the sloppiest games I've seen in a while. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, so they sneak Baron, which is actually pretty bad for you guys. So, yeah. You should be up with your team looking for picks aggressively here, because it is a, at best, for them, it's a 4v5. Yep. So. Just play with your team here, you guys get more picks. Uh, try to get... Um, as many barons off as you can, and then now you got the picks, you guys gotta reset, try to clear out your base again. So, good, you guys can buy more, every, like, basically every pick just buys you guys more time on your inhibitor, <laughs> and that's all you can ask for at this point. Good, yeah, another pick, another, what is that, another 70-ish seconds to do stuff. <laughs> okay, don't, don't fight that guy. <laughs> just take the blast. Ah, oh, just take the blast. Yeah, I turned because I uh, saw Kate coming and I thought we could get her. Oh god. Dude, that guy actually fucking saved you. Jesus. Okay. So, it's fine to see Caitlyn there and uh, want to turn. But the thing is, um, you can take the blast plant and then just W him. And then Caitlyn, like, the thing is, like, Caitlyn is gonna be a long ways away from you. Regardless. All you need to do is keep, like, Evelyn's still gonna chase you. Just keep Wing. Just keep Wing. Just keep Wing. Oh. Just walk back up and keep Wing. That's literally it. Just back up and keep Wing, and then Caitlyn, that'll buy time for Caitlyn to come in. Cause like, you guys need you losing your GA there for free. Okay, it's not for free. You you're trading it for a pick though, and that's still a bad trade. So like, you need to prioritize keeping your GA up a lot more than you did in that situation. Cause not having your GA makes it so difficult for you to fight. Because then you're dependent on someone else going in. 
um, to set you up. Um, whereas if you have GA, you don't necessarily have to wait. It's still better if you can wait for someone to set you up, but you don't have you don't have to wait, and that's always good for you. Because um, if you see an opportunity, um, like at, like if you have GA, you could also set up your team. Like if you jump in and you don't have to be afraid because you have GA to spawn you up, then then you're Renekton and your Ari can like follow up and go in, and that just buys time for Caitlyn to free hit. Because Caitlyn, uh, despite the fact that he shouldn't have what there's here at this point. Um, is four items and you know just late game Caitlyn is insane so all the time you can buy for her with like GA and just like frontlining and everything um, is really really is really really strong so losing your GA there for free it, uh, essentially for free is really really bad because you should have had that pick on Evelyn regardless oh. why is um, buying Bloodthirster for Caitlyn really bad here? Uh, he needs armor pen because this guy has Tobi and this guy's Tobby is dead and dead man's. Um, this guy had Tobby, but he sold it. I don't know why he did that. This guy has Zanya's, um, and this guy's a this guy's a tank. So she either needs either Blade of the Ruin King or a uh, armor pen item instead of Bloodthirster, or even a defensive item um, is just better than Bloodthirster here. No, because she needs to be able to kill. Um, she needs to be able to kill the front line fast. It's not the worst item, but there's better items to buy in this case. Okay. Just be playing up with the Gatelyn more here. So like if Evelyn jumps her, then uh, it, it dissuades Evelyn from jumping the uh, jumping the kit your Caitlyn if you're close to her. Okay. Don't have slots for don't have slots for uh, control words at this point. So the only way of clearing vision is sweeper. Okay. Wow, he actually wasted two SS. Yeah, same thing uh, as early in the game. Don't be jumping in like that. Like, make sure, like you, <laughs> make sure if you're going in. Like, uh, make sure if you're going in, there's no chance that anything will get turned on you. And if you want W, just walk up a W. Ah, uh, a lot of the redemption. Yikes. Okay. Wow, I can't believe you guys won this. Oh no, you're not gonna win this. Oh, 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 shit, it's lit. Wow. What a... F what, what abilities. <laughs> It's not over yet. One of these is gonna die. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, the biggest thing I want to point out about this fight is right here when the engage happens. Uh, well, we're not gonna go into here. And he chunks you out. And then Rakan is about to engage. You have to play so reserved here, right? Because you don't have GA. Imagine if you had your GA in this fight, right? You could just be up there following up on this right now, and then Ari is free to just go in with you and Renekton. The thing is, because you don't have GA here, you have to be so afraid of this guy coming over the wall and just finishing you off that you have to play so far back in the team fight that you can't even be getting. You're not even getting W's off properly. So, like, you get one W off on like. The Galio, <laughs> and that's about it for your contribution for this first half of the fight. Like, cause they just kill Echo without you. It, Riven goes in here, you just cast another W, and you're unable to. You're just unable to go in. You're just straight, straight, straight up. You're never really able to go in in this fight, and you're basically completely reliant on your team carrying carrying this fight because you don't have GA and. Because of that, you're in a position where it's very difficult for you to ever go in safely. You finally go in here, get docked up into the bounce house by the Galio ultimate. I'm not really sure what the thought process behind jumping into the Galio up there was. But, um, the thing about this. vision on the, the guy that was low HP. Yeah. This, uh, the thing about this fight, it's like. 
it's not necessarily that you play the fight poorly, but the decisions you made earlier in that resulted in you losing your GA uh, handicapped you into not having many options to uh, about how you could play the fight out because you just couldn't you can't jump into that because you don't have GA you're just gonna die. But because you don't have GA, like let's let's take a look at how uh, when does this fight start? Okay, well we'll say the fight starts to you right when Echo goes in on you here. So forty one thirty two and when does this fight end? Forty-one thirty-two. So this fight's this fight's um very very long. Forty forty-two oh eight it ends. So let's look at how much you do for the first half of this fight. Your whole contribution for about like the first half of this fight, when Echo jumps on you, is um you put damage on Echo and you, you get Echo ult and then that's about it. You get Echo ult and you W Galio. That's your whole contribution to this fight. <laughs> because you can't do anything else. You can't do anything else. Yeah. Does it make sense to recall at that point? No, no, no. Because you can't. You, this, you have to stick around and throw W. But um, the thing is, like, if you had just kept your GA, you wouldn't have had to play the fight the way you did. Yeah. And this, and this is. I'm just trying to illustrate to you, like, why it's so important that you don't throw away your GA like that. Because you could have played this fight completely differently had it was. Imagine if you, you, you went down, you went into the Galio you got like bounced around, then you got like W, Q off, and you did a bit more damage before you died, right? Imagine if you had GA there, and you spawn, and you can just kill Evelyn with Caitlyn. And then you guys can potentially even end the game. You can you, you can get inhibitor for sure, you can maybe even end the game. Depends how fast you guys shove, shove the wave up, if you have GA here. And it, it, it was a very, very simple fix to have GA there. All you needed to do earlier was just not die to the Evelyn. But because you don't have it here, um, this fight doesn't go as well as it, it could. Oh no. Wait, why didn't this guy just right click? Alright, alright! <laughs> oh god, I've seen enough. <laughs> I've seen enough. <laughs> Holy shit. Alright, so you went, okay, so you sold your, sold your Dirk to pick up Hex Drinker here, and you're gonna grab Maw. Um, that's fine, honestly. They got quite a bit of magic damage, I don't think that's a bad buy. Um, I generally don't like getting Maw and Death Stance, but, uh, I generally think Sterex is better if you're gonna get Death Stance, but that's fine too. That's not the worst thing in the world. The one thing you do when you keep in mind is if you get like early maw instead of like last item maw is that this item gives you like zero AD now. Like fifty AD is not a lot at all. Um, like Death Dance gives you eighty, and like uh, the the lethality items gives you a lot more than fifty as well. So if you do go maw, make sure you really really need the MR, especially because you're probably going to get a Death Dance too. So the the spell vamp and the life steal from the maw uh, once you hit the shield isn't that useful. You're basically only getting it for the MR. Oh. Okay, so your team has finally decided, uh... Your team finally realized you have Caitlyn, so you can siege. So... It only took you guys 43 minutes. So... Oh no... Get out. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> Alright. Alright, you could have had uh, eight items in that fight and it wouldn't have changed anything. Uh, yeah, there's very little to say about this fight. Um, cuz. I mean, I felt that we were still not strong enough to just run it down mid like that. Like, I felt really bad at this point about this push, but I don't know. <laughs> the, Should I, like... th this is your problem right here. <laughs> <laughs> these these three people who get stunned right here is the problem, <laughs> because uh, this this person has a dash, this person has a dash, and this person has a dash. So why are they all getting hit by by an echo stun? Because as soon as this echo stun hits and Galio follows up, this fight is over. It's like straight up, this fight is pretty much over. Because <clears throat> this guy doesn't have GA, so the best you can do for him is just peel with W. But, um, you're very limited into, like, 
You can't peel five people. <laughs> like, doesn't matter how strong your W. Your W could be a stun and this guy's gonna die. Like, the second he gets hit by one CC, it's so easy for this team comp to just layer it all in and just run at him. And then, at that point, there's nothing you can do. Because your win condition is Caitlyn not dying in the first five seconds of the team fight. And while you can try to peel for him, like I said, your the amount you can peel for someone who gets hit by that much stuff is very limited. So that fight's just instantly over. Yep. Alright, so just try to recall in a bush together. So if someone face checks you alone, you can kill them. And you need to get back to base ASAP. So if she wants to recall in that bush, just recall with her. Um, it's safer than... It's you. It's not necessarily safer than walking, but it's definitely safer than what the hell you're doing now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no real point in doing this. I, I decided to recall there because I thought uh, Galio could cut me off. Well, I'll just recall with Ari. It's safer than walking. Yeah. Makes sense. Because, yeah, if someone face checks you and Ari together, then she just hits a charm and you one shot him. Yeah. Thankfully, you get out, so you the game shouldn't end here. Should be able to wave clear with Ari here. Make sure you pick up an elixir. Okay. Okay, um. Elix. Unless you have. Unless you bought Lord Doms, um, and or you already have Merc Treads, and you need to keep the Merc Treads for the MR, Elixir of Iron is better than Elixir of Wrath. Just because uh, the extra HP and the tenacity is worth more than the AD and the Bloodlust passive you get from Elixir of Wrath, especially when you have Death Dance already. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Another one of these very awkward fights where someone just caught out. Oh, uh, damn, no W. So this is uh, this is a Baron. This is a Baron for sure. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> this is so perfect. So, the reason this is the right Baron call in this case is because even though they can potentially stop you with three people, if you guys lose Baron with two and hips down, you lose. So, your yeah. your your hand is kind of forced here. Uh, unfortunately, your Renekton isn't here, so you can't guarantee someone else tanks it. You do have Smite. What happens? Oh, you just don't Smite. Okay. So the Caitlyn headshot takes it down to like 200 and then really finishes it. So you kind of get caught off guard. So yeah. not necessarily your fault. Um, the one thing I will say is, um, when the Baron is starting to get low, um, like, uh, right here, just save your WQ, and just WQ, WQ auto smite it to burst it out, so stuff like that doesn't happen, or stuff like that happens less. Uh, oh, my smite is uh, 1000, right? So yes. what I always do is I, I just try to... Um, like look for, I don't know how much I should be looking for, but about like 1300. I don't know how much uh, armor the Baron has or anything, so I should probably look that up. But um, yeah, I'm looking for like 1300, but because it went down so fast, uh, because of the Caitlyn headshot, I, yeah, I missed it. So like I'm, I'm too focused on like one number. Another thing, uh, okay, so another thing you do if you want to do it like that is once it gets to like 2k, just stop hitting it. Unless... In a situation where like the only thing that's gonna matter is the smite, just stop hitting it at 2k. <laughs> you won't always get that luxury because um, sometimes you have to do it fast because the other team's coming. In that case, you kind of just have to just yolo it, use all your spells, and then um, hope to God you get it with the smite. But in a case like that, where literally the only thing you need to do is secure the baron because there's no way you lose a fight there, 5v3. Um, yeah. Worst case, worst, they push you off the baron. Just stop hitting it at 2k. Look at who your at who on your team is hitting it. And then try to try to gauge how fast it'll go down off that, and just get ready to spike. 
Ja. Ja. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, so now you guys are, you guys are pretty fucked. <laughs> so, uh, how many people got Baron? One. Okay, only one. Okay. Actually, not completely screwed. Um, once again, though, your win condition is Caitlyn, so you should be playing to just peel for her. Um, however you can. Um, if she, if you can't peel for her, like, if she gets hit by Echo W again in another fight, then, yeah, you just kind of play with the held hand you're given, but, um, <clears throat> what should we call it? Um, if it's possible at all, you want to be peeling with her. Peeling for her. Oh. Okay. So, oh god. He didn't actually go for the taunt. Oh, last fight's over. <laughs> wow, this is actually so sad. There wasn't a single fight this game where I could say. <laughs> wow. Let's look over this. It's not gonna take very long, but let's see. So, how does Caitlyn die? I know Echo kills Caitlyn. Where does Echo even come from? Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Alright, fight's over. <laughs> Straight up, like. There's really nothing to say about this, honestly. Like. <laughs> you guys just get bounce housed after. <laughs> The only yeah, the only way you can kill their team is with Caitlyn. Yeah, but they're sure did did this Caitlyn zero good here. G A Blade the Red King would have done anything either. Ball probably wouldn't have done too much. Like it's like if you can't position you don't buy Blood Thirster. <laughs> Might as well buy G A or Ball at that point. So unfortunately this fight is really like we, let's follow you. So you, you get damage off, you get damage off. You get taunted by Galio, and then the second you get out of the taunt, the fight's already over <laughs> because Caitlyn's dead. <laughs> so, so you peel back, but at this point, you got nowhere to go, and you're dead. You guys just get perma CC, and this fight's over. So yeah, realistically, um, there's nothing to really change about this fight either. Um, <laughs> you could have jumped upwards, but like even jumping upwards, like if you live, but the rest of your team is dead, which is gonna happen, uh, you can't really do anything anyway, and they're just gonna end here. So. Um, unfortunately, there was only like one actual fight in this game where I could gauge your team fighting ability because every other fight was over in an instant because your Caitlyn has no idea what positioning is. But um, to recap, um, your early game, you usually won't get put in a position where you fuck up. Like the getting counter ganked by Evelyn in, at level 3 mid lane and dying was pretty pretty bad like just straight up um, pretty hard to recover from um, against like better players um, I wouldn't necessarily say that you'll get punished this hard normally in a plat game for dying there but you really did get punished pretty hard this game you kinda were just relegated to having a farm you even got a uh, hunter's machete to pair with talisman really early to have a healthy HP or a healthier HP clearing but Pretty much all of your lanes, aside from middle, just lost 1v1 um, without like much jungle intervention anyway, so you didn't really have uh, many places to go to. You got some good uh, kills here and there where you, that you scrounged together, like when you went top uh, and just killed Riven, uh, when Riven just ran into your Renekton. Um, but um, as f there wasn't really much I could say about your early game after you got counter ganked by Evelyn and died, because... Um, you just had to play reactive after that, and Evelyn never and Evelyn and your lane, the how the lanes played out, never really gave you a chance to get back into the game. But um, I will stress that when you're going to go for a level three gank, make sure you take all the steps you can in uh in a time like in like a 10, 15 second time frame before you go for the gank to try to ensure you don't get counter gank because getting counter gank and losing double buffs is like catastrophically bad in the early game, especially as a champion like Kazix who. If he wants to full clear, he's usually not healthy enough to gank afterwards. So, um, like I said earlier, take um, 
take time to take uh take time to try to make sure you don't get countering it whenever possible. You know, sometimes it's warding rafters before going for middle, sometimes it's warding tri bush before going for top, sometimes it's uh making sure um you word um right here on the grump and then taking the blast pan over before you go for bottom. However it is, just uh take steps to try to make sure you don't get counter ganks. And if you can't uh, guarantee that you're not gonna get counter ganked, don't uh, go for the aggressive. Don't go uh, deep for the kill and go for the long chase. Uh, just take the summoner and get out. Because um, this hurts you so much. Like you never fully recover from this. Like the whole game until like super super late when everyone's like four or five item. You don't ever really recover from this. Because um, you you kind of just get stuck into a loop of having to farm to catch up um, before you're relevant, and then you just never really have great opportunities to make plays again um, until much later in the game after this happens. Um, like your team fighting, like I said, I didn't really get to see too much of it. Um, some of the fights that weren't over, like most of the fights that weren't over immediately, you had pretty good um, you had pretty good awareness of what your job was, tossing in your W's whenever you whenever you could. Um, jumping in whenever it was safe. You had some sketchy jumps in the mid game where um, you relied on the enemy team not using Galio properly and not counter ganking you with Evelyn properly and not using TP properly to counter gank you to succeed. Um, I won't say it's it's not the worst thing in the world. When you're behind, um, it becomes harder and harder for you to guarantee um, safety when you're going for picks like you went for MF uh, went for on MF in mid lane. If you remember that, I'm, I, I don't know exactly remember the timestamp. Um, I, I remember the kill, yeah. Okay. So sometimes, like, you'll have to make plays like that if you're behind just because um, you can't get, like, when you're 10k behind in 20 minutes, you, you don't, you can't necessarily guarantee you'll have the safety on every gank. So going for stuff like that when you're that behind is uh, usually acceptable because you're going to bleed out and lose anyway in most cases. Maybe it's not the. <laughs> For this game, it wasn't necessarily the case because these guys wanted to throw 24-7. But um, most times, um, when you're behind like that, it's fine to go for riskier plays to try to get yourself back into the game. But um, oh. I just want to stress, whenever possible, try to get uh, defensive vision out. Like this bush, blue buff bush, and this bush um, to try to get picks when they come in rather than having to force picks like in down the lane um, when you don't have vision of uh, a majority of their team. Um, oh. Like I said, I, I don't really get to see too much about your early game because you didn't play an even early game. You literally just lost yourself the early game by going for too aggressive of a gank at level 3 and you never really recovered. So I can't speak too much about it. But um, yeah, from what I saw, team fighting, for the most part, you have a pretty good grasp of what you should be doing. Um, you rarely, uh, most of the time, you're pretty uh, good about when you jump in and stuff. This game was a bit harder because um, Galio World, Double TP, and Evelyn Stealth made it very hard for you to ever secure. Um, a gank without any risk outside of um, you dying at the level 3 so can't say too much about that but um, from what I saw that's about it you have any questions? Um, not right now no. okay. I, I, I learned quite a bit of things in the, my, I, actually, I actually feel like my team fighting is pretty bad um, <laughs> so in a way I got lucky that <laughs> my AD carry just died so I couldn't make a, any mistakes <laughs> okay but um, yeah, I definitely would like to do another um, game sometime with more team fights. Because um, yeah. I usually feel like my biggest problem is when I do get fed, I'm pretty unable to close down games that should be wins, you know? So I'll just, I'll just tell you this. Um, in solo queue, the worst thing you can do is team fight. Because um, let's break down a situation, okay? So let's, let's actually go back all the way down to... <coughs> So, so pretend you don't get counter ganked here, okay? So, how many how many variables do you have to take into account in this situation, right? You have to take into account Echo's abilities and Echo summoner uh, Echo's abilities and Echo summoner spells, and you have to take into account Ari's abilities and Ari's summoner spells. But that's it, okay? And obviously yours as well. But you you always have to take into account yours. So there's there's two champions you need to be aware of. Let's 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 fast forward to the team fight. Uh, Let's just pick, um, let's see if, all right, this one. Let's pick the scene fight. Okay. So skip forward to the team fight. 
And... Well, let's wait for it to actually start. Okay. So, Echo jumps on you. He ults out. Okay, so... If you go in here, look at how much you have to take into account, right? You have to take into account how much how much damage these guys do to you, what summoners they have up. You have to take into account like, am I, am I gonna get exhausted? You have to take into account this guy has a GA. You have to take into account this guy has taunt. He has knock up. This guy might have ultimate to defend someone I jump in on. This guy can always come in from the side. I don't even know where Riven is, so if I go too deep, I might run into her. And like, look at all the variables that are in play here, and that's just on the enemy team. Mm -hmm. What happens What happens if Caitlyn dies instantly, right? You lose the fight. What happens if uh, Renekton goes all the way over here and goes too deep and no one can follow up and he dies, right? What happens if Ari misses every skill shot, right? What happens if uh, Rakan misses every skill shot, right? There's so much you have to take into account when you're team fighting. There's so many variables that makes it super high variance. Um, I'm sure you've seen um, Smurfs, right? And they, they get like 80, 90% win rate, right? Like up to like their, their, like, uh, their main elo, right? And yep. the reason they do that is because they can end the game before it makes it to the team fight stage, because and because they, they just know how to lane and all that better. But the thing is, um, you put a challenger player in like a platinum game, and you give he plays from minute one, he'll probably win like a good like ninety percent, eighty percent of his games, right? But if you put a challenger player into a plat game at thirty minutes and say you're not ahead, everyone has the same items at this point in the game, and you and you have to team fight, then he's probably he's not gonna win 80-90% of his games. He'll still win more than the average. He'll probably win a good like 70, uh, maybe high 60s if he's not a great team fighting player, but it's gonna be lower than he would if he started the game at, at the start, because there's just more variables in team fights, and that's exacerbated when you're playing at any elo range close to your true elo because you're not going to be good enough uh, at team fighting and there's going to be so many more variables in the team fight that naturally if it, the game makes it to the team fight stage it's going to be a lot more 50 50 than it would be otherwise if you're just playing from zero minute zero because if you're playing from minute zero then you have the opportunity to impact the game and end it if you play well enough before it ever makes it to a stage where you have to account for all these variables in a team fight. So it's honestly not as bad that you are that you say that you're not as great in team fighting. What you should really be focusing on is the first twenty minutes of the game and then if the game doesn't end by then, then you have to team fight. Um and like if you if you're forced to team fight you can't split push or anything, then um then you do it. But generally like the last thing you ever want to do in solo queue regardless of how good you are at team fighting, is team fight. Just because there's too much you have to take into account that's out of your control. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's uh, okay. very interesting stuff. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. So, if you ever want to schedule again, just hit me up, Skype, Discord, whatever, and we'll get something sorted out. Yeah, so, sure. Good, good luck in your games, man. I'll All see right. you around. Thank you, man. Bye-bye. All right. Uh...